All right, this is the Midwest Classic happening in Indianapolis earlier this year in March. Why did I decide to do this local crit? Well, because I wanted to try out my brand new state undefeated carbon road bike. This is the only road race opportunity I had before Pro Pro Nats, which is actually coming up this weekend. So I figured this would be a nice teaser video to let you see how it went. The testing of the new bike. I'm pretty far back. I started pretty far back on the grid. <clears throat> no call up for this race, unfortunately. But that's okay. I am flying solo, not on a road team this year, formerly on the Roadhouse team. There are three Roadhouse, or should I say, Rainstorm Racing guys in this race. I've raced with all three of those guys in the past, so I know them and I know they're strong, so they're definitely marked by me. And then you've got a bunch of <clears throat> Marion riders and Lindenwood riders because this is also a collegiate race. In fact, the collegiate riders are pretty good. They have won this race the last three years. Texas Roadhouse has failed to win this local crit, which is kind of funny. It just doesn't seem to be in the cards for us. I'm pretty far back. I like starting the race a little hesitant, get a feel for the course, get a feel for the flow of the peloton, and then start to slowly work my way up. I don't want to just burn a big match and go from the back to the front really quickly. I'll wait until the pace sits up and then I will start to move up once that pace slows down. Now, just for some history, I have done pretty well at this race. One time I got second. I really wanted to win. That was not in the cards. Last year, I think I was sixth or seventh overall. So I'm hoping to top that. Hoping that maybe I could pull off a win here. Obviously, local race, that's kind of what you go to local races to do is to try to win. Although I'm not going to pro road nats with that same mindset of I'm going to win. So it's a little different when you're doing these local races, what the goals are, what the intentions are, and how you race. It's definitely a little bit different when your goal is winning and not just getting a top 10 or something. Now the course consists of a pretty wide open road right here, which is a climb. You drop at the top of the climb, you descend. At the bottom of that descent is this sharp right-hander into a really strong headwind to the finish line. Important that you're in the draft right here. Most of the attacks are going to happen on that wide open climb though. That's going to be where most of the action in the race is going to occur. I'm going to start to pick off some guys one by one, but as you can tell the pace is still pretty high. Heart rate 190 right now, so definitely not just chilling. So I don't want to go any harder than what I already am, but as you can see right here, the pace is sitting up because the group is starting to bunch up, and anytime it bunches up like that, that's a good indicator that the people at the front have slowed down, and now is a good time to pass. Another good strategy for passing is just to follow the guys in front of you. This guy's going to make some passes, so I'm just going to jump on his wheel and follow him as he works his way to the front. That's a free ride. I'll take it. I'm still on this guy's wheel. He's going to put in a little bit of an attack. I'll follow, but my strategy in this race was not to go that hard the first 30 minutes, and I was going to be pretty strict on this rule. I was convinced that nothing serious was going to happen in the first 30 minutes, and so seeing as to how it's only 10 minutes into the race, I'm trying to just sit back, chill, watch, learn as much as I can about the racers, the competitors I'm against, and not do anything crazy in the first 30 minutes. So you can see I kind of go to the front and I could have maybe popped across, but again, it's only 10 minutes in, so I'm chilling. I'm just going to sit right here at the front, maybe follow some wheels, stay out of trouble, and then that second half of the race, I really expect to open it up and show my cards and hopefully make something happen in that latter half of the race.
gonna follow what looks like is going to be an attack, but then these three guys that were going pretty hard sit up and Apex counters that attack or just keeps it going, which was a good move. I think I would have pulled that same card had it been after the 30 minute mark. <laughs> Cause again, I'm stuck too. I'm not doing anything till 30 minutes in. So I'm chilling. I'm still just trying to stay at the front. It's all back together. There was a little bit of a gap there, but yeah, it's all back together again now. following moves one of the things that you really want to be aware of is who's in this move so there was a roadhouse rider or rainstorm racing rider marion and apex which are the three really big teams uh, lindenwood is also a big team so if three out of four of those big teams are in the break then you might assume that those teams are happy with the break and so that would be a good break to be in however if, if marion doesn't have a rider you know that they're going to be riding really hard to get back to that group and might not be a good group to be in. Pretty funny little interaction there. Marion has one guy off the front solo. Micah apparently wanted to pop across to his teammate and make it a two-man break, but that would be a bad strategy because two Marion riders off the front would set off some alarm bells and the group would probably start chasing. One Marion rider is not as big of a threat. So all of his Marion teammates were like, no, 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 don't do that. And I wanted to say, no, nah, Micah, go ahead, get across there, do it, man. But his teammates are smart, wouldn't have been a good, wouldn't have been a good strategic decision. You can start to tell that there's a little bit of a gap to some riders up the road. I think it's about five riders that start to get a little bit of a gap. And again, I'm looking at my watch. It says 28 and a half minutes. And so I'm thinking I don't want to get into this breakaway. Even though I'm right here at the front, I could pop across and get into it. Um, I decide not to because of my 30 minute rule, which in hindsight was not a good decision because this breakaway actually ends up getting away. You can see them up the road now. Some guys are trying to get across, but Marion and Rainstorm Racing, these two riders right in front of me, have every move marked. And so as soon as the front guy pulls off, the pace slows down. See, look, these guys are going to slow down. The, gro the, the gap is just growing right now because of the the lack of consistency. So I'm going to put in a big dig. It is now 30 minutes into the race and I'm like, all right, there's the break. I'm going to bridge across. I do a really hard attack. Heart rate pops up into the 190s, but I look back, Kyle Perry's on my wheel. Nobody wants to work with me. If nobody wants to work with me, it was too early in the race for me to want to commit to a full on TT effort to try to get across to this across to this breakaway and I didn't want to just drag the entire field with me which is what looked like it was going to be so I decided to pull the plug. Now the pace has sat up quite a bit a few times as you can see my heart rate is down in the 170s now which tells you the gap is growing. And here, right here on this downhill is where it's growing the most. Kyle Perry and these Marion riders are on the front on the downhill because they can lead on the downhill and coast, basically. And everybody else is gonna be content with that coasting 
and the gap is just going to be growing and growing and growing because we're going so slow on the downhill, which is kind of funny. Everybody wants to go hard on the uphill, but then everybody's totally fine to coast down the downhill. And that, I think, is why this breakaway lasted as long as it did. I'm going to try another attack. Marion follows. Cal Perry is going to follow the Marion rider. I get a little bit of a gap. I'm definitely starting to stretch out the field. But again, it's still over 20 minutes left in the race. Heart rate pops up in the 190s. I look back. I see Marion and Marion Ryder on my wheel. They don't want to work with me. I try to flick them through. He doesn't come through. Kyle Perry doesn't want to work, work with me. I should have, in hindsight, just committed to it. And I think I do for a little bit, but it's really hard by yourself to get get there right KP is on my wheel again right here and I'm looking for some reprieve I'm dying my heart rates in the 190s and he's just on my wheel saying nope sorry buddy groups all back together Lindenwood counters I got nothing left I'm gonna chill out 12 to go the only thing I can do at this point is try to recover and go for another attack but oh wait the pace is going to sit up let's just counter again and so back to back laps i tried to attack i attacked one lap ago now i'm going to do it again didn't get much recovery right there heart rate is 197 which might be the highest that you see it 198 the whole race but again the field is right on my wheel little bits of gaps here and there but again nobody really willing to work with me I think I might have been marked, which is a bummer. When you're only a one-man team and you're marked, it means means you got to be really careful about the matches you burn. So at this point, I should probably try to recover, save up my juice for one final attempt to get across because it's starting to get to crunch time, and there's you know ten laps left and it's looking like this, this, this gap might not come back. I caught this on my rear cam. You can see Aaron BB comes flying up on the inside, but he has to grab a pretty good handful of brake right here, but he still manages to attack. That should have sent off some alarm, alarm bells in my head. I should have followed that pink apex rider around this first turn. I could have been a little bit higher positioned and been able to follow that move a little closer because I know Aaron BB is strong. And I know that there is a rainstorm racer in this five man breakaway, but I know it's also their weakest rider. So I should have already been looking for rainstorm to be sending a rider across to give Tim some help in winning this race. And so I should have, I should have been on high alert and I am close to the race right here. I should have gone left and just popped across to this two man break. They now have a pretty good gap. It's a Marion rider and Aaron BB, I know that BB's strong. And if I had popped across right then and there, I probably could have gotten across to the breakaway with them. But now look at the gap. Two Marion riders on the front. Again, look at them. They're soft pedaling. They're coasting. And those two riders are gone. And my chances of getting into the breakaway have just plummeted. It's eight laps to go. And... I've got one last ditch effort to try to attack a couple times, but at this point, it's it's hopeless. It's useless. I'm, there's no way Marion's going to let me go. I've already attacked a bunch of times. My legs are pretty shot. I don't have that much energy left in the tank. Those two riders aren't that far away, but with no help from other people, kind of a bummer. I tried asking that Marion rider, how many riders you guys got in the break? Just one? Because I was trying to convince him, like, hey, if you guys only have one rider in the break, it would be a good idea for you to work with me 
so that you can get another guy in the break. And he says two riders, which to me, I'm like, okay, that makes sense. You don't want to work with me because you've got two men, two guys in a seven-man break. Those are pretty good odds. Yeah, I wouldn't work with me either. With only five or six laps left, we can literally see the break. I mean, they are 10 seconds ahead of us. That's them right there. So I'm thinking in the back of my head, we're probably gonna catch them. I mean, they are literally right there. So I'm like, all right, good news. We're gonna catch the break. It's gonna come back together. There's gonna be a reshuffle. So I probably need to start saving my matches for the counter attack that's gonna happen. But look who comes to the front. None other than, well, Lindenwood, but they weren't really much of a threat. But who's on Lindenwood's wheel? You got Kyle Perry and Marion, and what are they gonna do? They're gonna sit up. As soon as that Lindenwood rider pulls off, Kyle Perry's there to soften the pace, and what do you know is gonna happen? That breakaway is gonna ride away once again, not to be seen for the rest of the race. But at this point, I was kind of thinking that breakaway is done though. We're gonna catch them. It's gonna reshuffle. So I was trying to be smart and waiting for the counter attack. But that counter attack, I, I hate to burst your bubble, that counter attack will never happen. Because the breakaway will not get caught. Looks like it will, but it won't. And that's a bummer. Here's why they got away, right here. Look at this, Kyle Perry's on the front coasting. They probably gained 10 seconds just on this one downhill. I'm so frustrated about it, I'm gonna attack on the downhill. Cause like, come on, dude, the break was just there and now they're again, they're gone. It's too late, it's too little too late. What am I doing? I'm like, oh yeah, let me attack on the downhill because that was dumb. Now I'm leading into the headwind. I thought the breakaway was coming back. I'm so upset right now. The breakaway was right there. Probably could have stood up and gotten into it. So I'm gonna try to solo across. Always a bad idea. Don't ever do this at home, kids. Soloing across a gap is really hard to do. You don't have any recovery. And so you have to be able to either get there very quickly so that you're not just sucking wind a bunch or you have to just be really good at time trialing, which I don't think that I am. But I do have a gap. I can't, you know, you can't, you can barely see the, the, the group behind me, so I might as well just give it a go and see if I can hold them off. Maybe I can be, uh, you know, time trial it in and maybe get whatever place behind the breakaway. That's kind of what I'm thinking. And then I don't have to try to sprint the peloton. I'll just get eighth place or seventh place or whatever it was. A really big effort just for seventh place, but, you know, I guess that's what I got to do. I'm committed at this point, so to, to stop now would, would be kind of a waste of energy. But on this downhill is obviously a, a big group of riders are gonna go down this downhill a lot quicker than me and one other rider are going to. So yeah, the group catches us pretty quickly. Would have been cool to time trial the last three laps, but yeah, I also just don't time trial, so it makes sense that they would catch me. Groups all back together. I think there's two or three laps left. I could sit in and try to recover and do my best at a sprint, but we also are just sprinting for eighth place. So to me, trying to conserve some energy for two laps and then trying to get eighth place doesn't seem really worth it in my mind to risk crashing um, and that's only if I had won the field sprint which is pretty unlikely I don't win that many field sprints and so even if I do try to conserve and try to do my best in the sprint we're looking at a maybe a top 10 so 
I've pretty much checked out and have accepted the fate that this is just going to be a finish unscathed kind of race. Go you know, what a great idea. Uh, I'm training for Unbound 200, so let's just do a bunch of crits leading up to it. Um, it doesn't seem like that bad of an idea in my head. I'm thinking, well, I've already done all the volume training that I can do for Unbound, and it's only two weeks from now, so might as well race some crits and get some sharpness. I mean, one of the best workouts that you can do is 30-30s. It improves all levels of fitness. All the different aspects of your fitness can be improved by doing Tabata-style workouts. And crit racing is basically a Tabata-style workout. So I'm thinking I've already done a bunch of volume, so that volume is kind of is, it is what it is going into Unbound. So as long as I don't crash in any of these crits coming up, um, it could be a good way to taper for that event. So I'm doing pro crit nats this weekend, pro road race nats, which I'm hoping will go well. And then the weekend after that, I'm going to do the snake alley weekend of crits because I love those races. And then unbound is the very next week. So I'm thinking maybe these crits will be a good taper going into the longest race of the season. And we'll see how it goes. Maybe I'll be too sharp for the crits and then not have enough volume for unbound or maybe i'll be too volumized for these crits and i'll just get shelled i i don't know um but either way i have a good feeling about the road race at pro nats because uh trying to train for crits and trying to train for unbound maybe that means i'll do good at at something in the middle which would be the road race so yeah, i don't really know what to expect but it's what I want to do, so that's what I'm going to do.